So starting with OCalc 5, we have the ability to model uh, steel poles. And so let's go do a new pole, steel pole, and uh, who cares about this one? And I can set it up by attribute values. Now the thing to understand about steel poles is that their capabilities are typically specified by their manufacturer. So although we can enter them th in this way, um, the best way to do it is to pick them out of the catalog, either over on the side or here. So let's take a company we call called Valmont, and let's take a Valmont class 445. And in this case, I've got it modeled as a direct embed pole. But you see it's gone ahead and created a steel pole and hooked it all up. The important thing to understand is that unlike a wood pole, where what we do is actually model the capabilities based on the species of wood and some other understandings that we get from the properties of the material that the pole is made of, here the capabilities of the pole are modeled based on what the manufacturer actually tells you from testing and design that this pole is able to take. So let's take a look at the capacity. And there is both an, a buckling capacity and a moment capacity. And these are, of course, combined using superposition when you're doing analysis of the pole. But let's take a look at the moment capacity table. And this, this data is provided directly from the manufacturer. So we can see that it has at its, at its absolute base at the zero point at the zero foot mark you know 57,000 foot pounds of capacity and then the rest of the capacity chart is populated as you'd expect and so the in order to model one of these from scratch you'd actually have to know the manufacturer's moment capacity information or know what your organization's moment capacity limits for a steel pole of that type are but other than that it's the same as a wood pole in terms of how do we attach things to it, you know, so we can go ahead and and uh, actually let me just pull up, save myself a little time here, take this arm, put it on here. Now typically, you know, in this case I've put a wood arm on a steel pole, which is not something you would normally do, um, but it lets me do it, and I can actually change the arm's material to say, no, it's actually steel. And uh, now I would ask me to fill in material properties. I'm going to go ahead and just cheat and say I go to my ASC catalog and get a, a square structured uh, piece of something that I want to use. And that's the property of that cross arm. But in terms of actually working with the pole, it's, it's identical. Now, steel poles come in two flavors. They come in as direct embeds or they come as pedestal mounts. And the way that's controlled is to go under installation. In this case, I have the mount type set to embedded. But if I set the mount type to pedestal, you see it synthesizes the pedestal and puts it on it. And then what I can do is say, OK, well, the distance to the grade from the top of the pedestal is 14 inches. Uh, excuse me, 14 inches. Uh, again, you saw the trick where I entered it with the double tick mark to say it was inches and it automatically converted it to the units that it expected. So it converted to 1.167 feet. There it models my pedestal. There it models my pole on top of my pedestal. The relative position of the arm stayed the same. And now I've modeled an on pedestal um, installation as well. So that's the basics of how you model a steel pole or a manu indeed a manufactured pole of any kind, since in all cases, with manufactured poles, we use that same capacity table functionality to describe the capacities of the pole as indicated by the manufacturer.